Plus it on skydiving physics. Woohoo! Skydiving is all about the balance or imbalance of forces. A great application of Newton's second law, which is net force equals mass times acceleration stated mathematically. But really, this equation just tells us that force produces acceleration. That a net force causes masses to accelerate. Where the net force is the sum of many forces. So we can have more than one force at work. Maybe a force this way and a greater force this way. And the net result would be the combination of these two forces and give us a result of maybe, in this case, a slightly upward force. Also noting that the net force and the acceleration, or the motion of the object, are always in the same direction. That is, if we have the net force upwards, in this example, the acceleration will also be upwards as well. Let's take a look at how Newton's second law applies to skydiving. Just after jumping out of the plane, we can observe our skydiver accelerating and falling faster and faster. That's because the force of gravity is the only force acting upon her at that moment. We can then write the net force as the force of gravity equals her mass times her acceleration rate. Well, if she's just falling due to gravity, she's in free fall, and this downward acceleration would be equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But what happens as she keeps falling? But first, let's talk about air resistance. When you're just walk out for a walk, da, 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 do you realize how much air you are shouldering? That is, there's a lot of air above you to the upper atmosphere. If we take a look here, we can see all this air is above you as you're out for your stroll. But how much force does that air exert on you? Well, it's actually the force of a small compact car that you're carrying on your shoulders every day. But why don't you feel all that force? Well, keep in mind that air exerts forces on you in all directions. So the net force on you due to all this air is actually equal to zero. And you don't feel that pressure of air resistance as you walk. Now let's get back to skydiving. As our skydiver is falling a few seconds later, she's now encountering a little bit of air resistance or drag. So that is, it's the force of gravity acting on her, as well as a small amount of drag or air resistance. Our net force then is written as the force of gravity downwards minus this force of drag upwards. This will then produce her mass to accelerate. But how much will her, her acceleration rate be now compared to negative 9.8 meters per second of free fall? Will her acceleration be equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared, less than negative 9.8, or greater than negative 9.8? Pause and consider. Well, if you said her acceleration will be less than negative 9.8 meters per second, you would be correct. Since we're now subtracting this force of drag from the force of gravity, this acceleration number will be less. So she will not be in free fall, but she'll be accelerating at a rate of less than negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But what if she keeps falling? Falling after a few more seconds, She still experiences the force of gravity, but now the force of air resistance, or drag, has increased. And that's true. The longer you fall, the more air pushes on you until it reaches the limit of drag equaling your force of gravity. So how would she be falling now? If the force of gravity and the force of drag are equal, and that produces her mass to accelerate, then this number here will be zero. So the net force on her will be zero, but she will still be falling. So what is her motion then? Well, 
at this point then her acceleration rate would be zero, which means she's falling at a constant velocity. We, we call this constant velocity as she's falling terminal velocity. That is, you would just observe her falling at a constant velocity the whole way. But what happens when she pulls the cord for the parachute? Upon opening the parachute, there's going to be a great upward force for just a brief moment. That is, the parachute will create an enormous amount of drag greater than the force of gravity. Writing out the net force then becomes force of gravity minus that force of drag, which is a greater number now, will produce acceleration on this mass. This will result in an upward acceleration on the parachuter when the force of drag is greater than the force of gravity thus slowing down the parachuter. But what happens as the parachuter continues to fall with the chute open? After continuing to fall a couple seconds later, we observe the skydiver falling at a constant velocity again, or a new terminal velocity. This is now when a new force of drag due to the parachute will equal the force of gravity downward. And again, writing that force, or the force of gravity, minus the force of drag, will produce acceleration on this mass of the parachuter. Again, we see a constant velocity, so we know these two forces will be equal to zero. And hence the acceleration will then be zero, and we'll be falling at a new constant terminal velocity which is lower than the terminal velocity was before without the parachute, thus allowing the parachuter to land safely on the Earth. Thank you for watching, and see you in class!